Tim here, Tier D Adventures. Welcome back, as always. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you all for the continued channel support. Much, much appreciated. So, let's get to it. Vanquish VS410 Phoenix Portal Kit. And it's a solid rock star already. My opinion, probably the best um, release of 2021. And definitely a contender uh, for any trucks that will be released in 22. Um, it's just, that's my thoughts on it already. Just from getting it out and driving it from what I've done and the kit itself and just this truck's overall potential. So, hit y'all a little backwards there. We did a running video first and probably hit it with a little bit of some breakdown what all I've done and my thoughts uh, so far. What all have I done to make this my Phoenix? So, start here on the outside. Um, no in on here we went with a little bit of a kind of crazier little paint job a little bit or crazy for me i've always wanted to do kind of a half and half a uh, two-face uh, paint job on one of my rc cars now when i saw the vanquish get released um here just seeing the design of the truck and how the bedsides were i thought it would be a perfect opportunity to try it so we did and we went with some just good old classic colors we went to me a silver and to me a black i did my best here Got my caliper gauge out, uh, measuring, taping, marking, laying down my tape. I did my best here to make sure it was pretty straight down the middle. Solid 10 footer, as always coming from my painting experience. I think it came out really good. I wanted to definitely hit the opposites, you know, fenders, both sides, opposite matching, opposite but matching colors. In the middle, I want to do just a little extra little black stripe down there. Uh, bed sides, half and half, wheels and tires even. So... Overall, I think it came out uh, pretty good. And the uh, you know feedback uh, on the pages for the paint, everyone seems to really like it. So super excited, just really happy the way everything kind of came out. In addition to some painting there, one of the first things I thought of um, was when I saw you know how the cage design was. You know, everything's nice, open, visible. You got the fuel cell back here. Now, regardless of what paint scheme I went with, I knew I wanted to paint the cage silver. So uh, we did. So I used an automotive stainless steel spray paint. It actually has flakes of stainless steel in it. Um, I've used it before um, and it's held up really well. Hit the fuel cell there with some Tamiya TS Red, you know, just to give it that extra character. You know, it just, that's just kind of what it needed to be. And then bust out the good old faithful silver Sharpie and hit all the bolt details there, you know, just for that little bit of extra, you know, detail. And came out really good you know yes it's silver sharpie we get super fancy around here so it works out great uh, interior wise nothing crazy um, i just hit the flooring and everything with the white and then the seats i did black and the dash i did black um i haven't picked out a driver yet but i'm i'll get one picked out here before too long get a driver in there and you know just to get one in there um also moving here outside uh tires here we went with um i wanted more of a scale tire for this build so we went with the Proline Crawler uh, TA in a G8 compound. Great tire. Always a fan of the crawlers. Uh, I've used them before. I like them. And the looks of them are great. And for foams, we're using the Voodoo Halo foams. I'm using a yellow dot foam here in the rear and a white dot foam here in the front. You saw from the previous the VS410 running video, um, they do really well. Hold up good, side hill, all that. Still solid foam. I love them a lot. Uh, for the wheels, we went with Vanquish. Uh, method 305s, black and silver rings on one side and silver and black rings on the other. You know, just just that little bit of extra. And I think everything just came out really, really good. Everything, you know, flows really well. And it's, it's almost like I got two trucks. I'm very pleased with how it came out and that I actually got something pictured in my head and I got it to come out very very close to how i wanted uh now i also did do the lights here i went with the incision light kit um, which has headlights and tail lights and a controller super easy kit to install and very affordable and it was like 35 bucks for the kit they're not like q series light bright but they get the job done and i'm happy with it um you know if i start doing more night runs with it need more light um, i can always and i have thought about putting uh, one of the proline light bars right here on the hood just for more if i need to but Right now, I'm very, very happy with it. Also, super clean here. No body clips, nothing like that. We have two hidden body clips here uh, in the rear. And then you can lift up, access your electronics, change out your battery, all that good stuff. 
and you want to pull the body all the way off. Again, there's one more hidden body clip here, and then there is a slide pin. Pull the slide pin out, and boom, the entire body is off. Underneath here, everything again came together really good. Uh, faux radiator here in the front, I also hit it. Uh, it comes black, I also hit it with the uh, stainless steel uh, paint as well, just to, you know, just a little more depth and you can see it through the grill and stuff like that. So I think that helps out a lot there. So electronics, uh, motor ESC, went with a little something a little different here. Um, knowing that I had three servos to get in here, wire up and stuff like that, um, I went with a little space saver option. So we put in the Spectrum, uh, the two-in-one ESC motor combo. I went with the 2300 KV option uh, using the stock pinion and spur gear. Um, that come in the kit, everything there's fine, plenty of low speed control, plenty of wheel speed if I need it. So super happy with it. And the uh, Spectrum is five millimeters shorter than it's than the Hobbywing Fusion, its counterpart. Um, so I'm not sure what the reasoning was for the change in size between the Hobbywing Fusion and the Spectrum, but I'm glad they did because it now fits in the VFD with no modification. And I still have plenty of clearance on the backside there. So super awesome that I don't have to mod anything like I would if I wanted to, if you wanted to put a Fusion in there. Uh, front steering servo here. We went with the In The Works RC BLS X900 servo. Um, again, anytime um, servo wise, if you have multiple servos, I always definitely recommend at least going a little bit extra, spending the money, getting a good front steering servo. Now, for the two servos back here, for the overdrive option and the dig option, you don't have to go crazy. They don't require a lot of power. I think they were saying it. all it takes is a 9 kg servo to fully operate and engage both the overdrive and the dig units. So you don't have to go too crazy, uh, but we used a uh, Three Brothers RC G11 here for the rear. And in the front here, we're using a Reedy servo. I believe it actually came out of my Night Runners. Again, just kind of, since kind of rushed and kind of got this kit, um, went with kind of what I had laying around and like I said, they don't require a whole lot of power, so that servo is going to work fine. Um, if I choose to upgrade to get everything officially matching later on or go more, try to find some low profile servos, those are always an option. And I've already seen people uh, integrating the micro servos to work these. So there are plenty of servo options out there. You spend the money, definitely get you a good steering servo. Um, you don't have to go crazy here. As long as, they, as long as the servos are decently strong and they function, they will get the job done here. Now, one thing to help with these two, once you get these, your overdrive servo and your dig servo and ready to rock and roll, take your time and set your endpoints. Setting your endpoints is going to be very, very crucial with both of these, more so with the overdrive unit. You know, dig is on and off. Now, the reason for setting your endpoints, stuff like that is, you know, so you're not putting constant low, constant pressure on your servos, causing them to get hot, causing them to burn up but also making sure you have proper engagement. You're not having a lot of gear clash and stuff like that when you're engaging gear, when you're switching between the different levels of overdrive and engaging the dig. You're making sure everything's a nice clean engagement. You engage on the fly. So it's you're moving and you engage and they go. So for the dig, it's simple, on and off, set your controller, whatever you're using for a two position switch and you know adjust your invoice a little bit, make sure everything's good there, not too much, but not too little you know, find that sweet spot. Take your time, it'll it'll come. Now for the overdrive, this actually has three options. 6% overdrive, rear-wheel drive only, and 33% overdrive. Now me personally, I didn't see myself using the rear-wheel drive only option very much, so I basically bypassed. I just using a, set my aux to a two position, so I'm between 6% and the 33% overdrive. So that's just where I'm at there. And that's a personal preference. I just, I don't see myself using the rear wheel drive option very much. Um, if I need that, that'd be more for like some bashing type stuff. I have other trucks I can use for that. I don't need to do it with this. All in all, that is my VS410 Phoenix as it sets right now. There will be some more videos coming on this. Um, I would like to do one more on some more in-depth going over some of the, you know, I don't know if I really need to go more to depth on some of the details and stuff like that. There's been several other videos, but I would like to do a couple more just out and about, you know, specifically pointing in on some of the, like the dig and the selectable overdrive, stuff like that. And just some more, just some good old crawl videos. But my overall thoughts of this truck, I'd love it. My opinion, 
like I was saying, probably easily best release of 2021 and a solid front run contender for any releases coming up for 2022. Um, would I recommend this kit? Most definitely. 15 out of 10, I would recommend this kit. This is going to be a lot of people's first kit. They're coming over from other brands. Um, I don't want to necessarily point fingers or anything like that, but they're transitioning over. This is going to be their first kit of something like this quality, this in depth and stuff like that. Take your time, read the instructions, you know, just double check yourself. Now the manual is very good. I like the manual a lot. And there is an updated PDF as well that has just a couple changes and a couple different pictures of some things pointed out and made a little bit clear. For me overall, I enjoyed the kit together. It went together very, very smoothly. I had no hiccups. Everything was good. No missing pieces, anything like that. It was a very soothing build. Enjoy it as always anytime I build a Wish kit. It's just, it's a soothing build. But this is like your first kit or anything like that. You know, this is, this is a lot going on in it. This truck has a lot going on. Take your time, breathe. If you start going through the instructions and you start getting frustrated or something's not going mad, put the tools down. Don't keep working on it frustrated. Things will just continue to go south. Set them down, get up, give you a breather, a little woosaw, grab you a drink, go pet the doggo, relax for a little bit, and then come back to it. You know, just take a look at what you're doing. Take a look there. It'll it'll work itself out. Take your time. Sometimes you just you get in your own head and then you start stuff going mad. Like there are issues with the shock collars. I've seen a lot of people have issues with that. Take your time. Just make sure they're on there nice and straight. Put a little oil on the threads if you need be, or a little bit of grease around the threads. The adjusters will go on nice. I like the fact that they're really tight. I don't have to worry about them coming loose and changing my spring rates as I'm driving. And again, follow the manual. One thing I always do on the manual, um, as I'm assembling, you know, it points out, you need this, you need four of these, this, this, and this. So I get all that. I put everything in. And then when I'm done with that step, that page, I stop and I look at everything on that page and what I have in front of me. I make sure everything matches. Okay, bolts are there, bolts are there. Gear, 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 picture, gear, gear, gear. Okay, gear, shaft, pin, gear, shaft, pin. And I look, gear, shaft, oh, I don't have a pin or a C-clip. Oh, I put put it on there. If it's in the picture, I mean, I go back and double check, make sure I didn't specifically miss a step, but if it's there and I don't have it, I'm probably going to put it on. So, again, just take your time. It's okay. This may seem daunting, but it's a fun kit, and it's well worth it. I Vanquish priced this kit very, very well. Uh, $4.99 for the kit, which, in my opinion, is well worth it. Yes, just the kit. You still need to source your own electronics, but that means you're going to get to choose what electronics you put in it. And then when you compare that price point of the kit with electronics, you know, just a kit alone versus something else like a 10.3 or a TRX-4. This is going to hand it to them. And I will say that with confidence. Um, I've had three tier 10.3s. I've had seven TRX-4s. Lightly modified, highly modified. Even towards the higher modified ones. This gets it. Um, taking this out, this kept up some LCG trucks. A couple G-speed builds out there. Now, yes, it did not and could not do everything they could, but it kept up very, very efficiently and better than if I'd had something else. So it is definitely worth the money. It's a very high quality kit. Everything went together good. High quality kit. Lots of thought, lots of design put into this kit and this truck this overall and its performance shows. Um, it performs as good as it looks. So if you have any issues as well, you know, VP, they have very good customer service. Anytime I've had to use them, it's been spot on, no issues, happy. And again, I will always recommend it just because Vanquish is its own thing. It's always kind of been in its own category and it is that way for a reason. But I'm really excited just to, you know, get this truck out some more, just put it through its paces. And yes, um, we'll get some more videos as soon as I start, you know, changing up a few things here and there. If I start, you know, messing with the shocks and stuff like that, um, We'll go into those. We'll obviously keep covering up that stuff if stuff becomes available. Um, I know IERC already makes like shock towers and stuff like that for that, but with the new design, the new fenders, and how the cage mounts in, those aren't necessarily going to work. So, there's a play if there's um, a support for that type of stuff. 
as we go. I've heard it mentioned that they will be having um, alloy axles uh, option with the F10 axle available at some point in time. So if that's your thing and that's really what you're waiting for, or that's just for whatever reason, uh, some silly reason that you're not interested in the Phoenix because it has plastic axles, I'll say that's a silly reason. They still perform great. They work great. And I see no issues with them whatsoever. And have that metal option at some point too. So not a huge thing to, you know, shoot the truck down for right off the bat. Again, just happy with the way it is. Um, it got kind of rushed to the table. Uh, SCX6 um, would have been our next vehicle on the table. Really excited for that truck. Um, I really do want one of those for, I don't know why, but I do. But when they released this kit and I just read all the details, I knew I needed this before the SCX6. And which I think is going to work out good because now, um, kind of seeing stuff, uh, Trio is already showing teasers for uh, alloy housings for the AR90s that are under the SCX6 and some uh, alloy shock towers, which is definitely going to be good, which I knew that needed to be probably addressed. If they're anything like the 10.3, this mean a much bigger truck. I think that could be a more brittle part, larger scale. So having that alloy option already um, in the works is going to be really, really nice. And also, I know there are already fifth scale servos out there, but it's we're already seeing uh, Three Brothers um, on the fan page release a teaser of their fifth scale servo. Uh, 3,000 pound sensors of torque is what he's testing that out right now. So even servo options will be coming out for that before too long. So I think it's going to end up working out better to wait on the SX6. That'll probably happen um, early next year, you know, after the holidays. Uh, automotive, winter time's always a little rough, and we expect it. This year looks to be a little rougher than normal around here, so we're just going to hang in tight and do what we can. But I still have plenty of other stuff to play with and mess with, so it'll be okay. You know, if something happens and we get it early, we get it early. If not, we'll get it when we get it. Overall, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, as always, hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel down below, and thank you again, as always, for coming in and hanging out. More to come on the VS410. Also, in the last video... I uh, posted, you saw some little driving of my TTC race. I think I've only really showed that in the live stream. So I will be doing a breakdown video on the TTC uh, Wraith um, and the Kiddos Bomber and a little more in depth on what TTC is because that's something I'm really starting to um, build some trucks for. So in the meantime, everyone have a great one and crawl on.